Hey everybody, how's it going today? Thank you so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. So sorry for the late start, but lots going on and wanted to get everything ready for tonight. Uh, the rollout of the, of the contest and my special kind of news I want to share with you guys. Something that is like... Let's see, 2010, 2009. So you're looking at 12 years in the making here. And that is really something I really want to share with you. So welcome first to part six of painting the beautiful and talented Kelly McDonald. So I'm very happy about that. And also, I want to thank everyone who's taking time out of their busy Wednesday night just to hang out with little old me. Thank you so much. Let me see if I could uh, have a pick. Where am I? Sometimes I am not able to. Uh, let's see. Where is the camera? You know what it is? I think I have to move this up further. Is that what it is? No. Okay. So right there is the camera. And let's see. It should should show me. But not that important to see me uh, that's for sure <laughs> let me see if uh, if I could uh, move something uh, down perhaps let's see if I move this and this one okay so all right so so we can't see me right now but that's okay uh, but I want to announce very excited that I am now offering an online course. And that to me is, is something that a lot of people have been asking for over the years. And so I'm very excited to uh, offer that to you. And let's see, uh, I am going to go get the what we're going to be painting in the online course. I'll be right back. Great. So this is almost four hours of video in the online course. And in the course, you will be painting this. And I'm so excited about it. And uh, I'm going to put it in the description here. I mean, in the comments. Let's see if I can get that for you. Now, the link is in the description field, of course. So that's good. And let me put that here. So there is the link for it. It's right there in the comments, which is really good. And I'm really excited. I mean, I worked so diligently to create a course that kind of condenses my mentorship class. So I'm really very, very happy about it check it out the price for the course is very inexpensive which is really really uh, something that I wanted to be able to do for everybody and it has everything to do with the way that I structure my live streams the way I structure my classes and I really think if you check it out it could be a real godsend to those who don't have time to let's say you know, join in the mentorship program. And I think Wendy coined the phrase so perfectly is that a lot of people have kind of uh, irregular schedules and are unable to go ahead and, uh, you know, have a regular class time, even online, which is, you know, really uh, something that I definitely wanted to be able to uh, share that with everybody. So I'm excited and I hope you all are excited. So what I'm going to do, let's 
see if uh, if I go here, if I bring this up. Okay, so let's see. If I come here, and all right now. I'm trying something new, so bear with me, everybody. Let's see. And we are going to our browser. And now I get to go ahead and put in the URL. And let's check it out and see if it works. Okay, great. So here is my online course. So I hope you all can see that. And so you can basically, it's the painting the classical portrait in airbrush in India ink. And we can scroll down and you can see what the course is about. And, you know, these are excerpts from, you know, little snippets from the actual class. And let me see if I can pull this down here. And, and so here is the course curriculum. And you can see from welcome to adding the white mixture to painting the features, uh, going into detail, using uh, Blackbeard wheat, using erasers, the refinement of the forms going into anatomy. So all these different things are really in this class. And for only $149, I think it's probably one of the best values out there. And that's what I want it to be. I want it to be about you, you all and the value that I want to give everybody. So that's all I have to say about that. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask me. You can email me at paintedglyphs at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to answer. Okay, so we can put her aside. And so you would learn how to paint this picture from beginning to end. Now, what's included in this online class is the line drawing, all the stencils. You get a set of my Airbrush India inks, a small set of the Airbrush India inks, the white mixture, a white pastel pencil, uh, some paper stumps, a paper stump, everything that you would need to get started. Uh, you would have to get the little paintbrush and that's it. And then you could follow along and, you know, create this painting together. So thank you for hearing my little spiel on that. I really, really appreciate that. So now let me go ahead and say hello to everybody. It just give me one moment. And all right, so let's see who we have in the house. Wendy, how are you? Thank you so much for hanging out. Really wonderful to see you. Willie, always a pleasure. And we have Dennis Baker, how are you? Thank you for purchasing the Extreme Patriot Arrow. I am so honored to create an airbrush for you. And I know you're going to love it. And you're going to have so much control of everything and the detail you're just going to love. Brad, how you doing all the way from Manitoba? Mr. Roy, color graphics, Jersey guy. And we have Tone, how you doing? How's life in Florida? Hope you're doing well. Mr. Mike Loach, how are you all the way from the Atlanta area? Go Falcons. Go Braves. You guys are in the playoffs. We have... Hi, honey. How are you? Always a pleasure from Rockville Center, uh, Long Island. Great to see you. And then we have, do do do. Let's see. We have uh, Mr. Steve Leahy. How are you, sir? Always a pleasure. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, just incredible work you're doing. Really loving the uh, the creek painting you're doing. It's it's top top notch. It really is one of the better paintings I've seen. Uh, from any artist, so really nicely done. And let's see who else we have. Mr. Dwayne Marshall, how are you, sir? And great artist, and thank you so much for purchasing the Extreme Patriot Hour from me, Dwayne. I really don't take it lightly. 
Miss Colette, all the way from Wisconsin, how are you? And then we have Kat, thank you so much for the congratulations on the course. That means everything to me, thank you. And then we have Squeeze, Bob, how's it going? Always a pleasure. How are you? All the way from San Francisco, great pastel painter over there. And then we have, let's see, we, we have, uh, la, la, la. I think that's it. Patty, how are you? From Illinois, great to see you. And so, um, so tonight we are, yes, yeah, super late tonight. That is so true, you know. Uh, but better late than never, they say, right? So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad that just been so much going on creating the online course. And uh, so kind of, you know, the energy level, trying to keep that energy level up. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, not enough coffee. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, glad you're here, Mr. Bob, definitely. So I have the detail mixture in the airbrush. And what I'm going to do, we, you know, when you first start with a painting, you always want to warm up with the detail mixture. You don't want to go in like a cowboy with the medium, a dark mixture. It's just not good to begin a painting that way, right? So let's make this happen. We're going to lighten her up a little bit. And so let's see. Oh, Dwayne says not late at all over there. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, so let's see here. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to, uh, you know, maybe just go over some of her features together. So let's zoom in on her eyes. I always like to begin the day working on some eyes, right? And so what I want to do is I am going to take my mechanical pencil and I'm going to look at her eyelids, right? And see how I can actually uh, work on this a little bit better, uh, just a little more detail. And let's see, so come down here. Oh, there goes my hat in the way. Just pull her lower eyelid, her upper eyelid actually comes down a little bit. And I'm going to work on this until I get it right. Let's see if we can get my trusty Ink Flingers airbrush glove on. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. It's so amazing to see everyone. Okay, I got to make sure I remember not to get that hat in the way there. I use a mechanical pencil because it is better than using it's definitely better than than using the airbrush to do something this tedious. And you have to fight, you know, your normal inclination of why you're in why you're fixing it. So sometimes I'll make a mistake or an inaccuracy and then I'll go and try and paint her again and then I actually go ahead and and re reproduce that inaccuracy it's very weird how the human mind will continue to perpetrate the same mistake and that's where I am so we're really not seeing much here of the lower eyelid but we're actually seeing the under underside of that lower eyelid which is very interesting right very interesting and we'll just bring that in like so little things like this you know yeah it's the end of the painting but doesn't give us an excuse to you know leave an inaccuracy when we know there's an inaccuracy right so i'm just going to get my pad here and I'm going to make sure I have my proper let me see here ok 
Okay, so I have the pencil. Hey, Mr. Brad, thank you so much for the super chat sticker. That means a lot to me. That is fantastic. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, Mike, before you go, I wanted to and thank you so much, Mr. Brad, for the super chat. That means a lot to me. So Mike Deloach, before you go. So remember, we are having the contest. I'm pushing it up to November, the second week of November. And it's a painting of Laura Dern. It has to be done in uh, India inks. It could be on any paper, but we prefer it to be on either the Canson paper or something similar to that, the color line paper. Those of you in the UK could use the De La Rowney, uh Dreadnought Gray. That would be fantastic. So we're going to move this contest up to... Uh, Wednesday, November 9th. So you would have to have them ready an email to paintedglyphs at gmail.com beforehand. Uh, I would say on Wednesday the 2nd, October, November 2nd, Wednesday, November 2nd, you have to that time to email it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll have the judges look at it and we'll announce the winners November 9th. The exciting thing is Mike Deloach was so kind enough to add as the first prize, and this is his donation, is an Extreme Patriot Arrow customized by myself. And here's the very airbrush. This is mine. This is the very airbrush, the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow, which is set aside. That's going to be first prize. We have second prize, which is going to be a full set of the Airbrush India inks. And third prize is going to be some personalized merchandise. And we'll have some other prizes, several, um, uh, you know, honorable mentions. So your chances of winning are really very high. So it could be any photo of Laura Dern. Just make sure it's nice high resolution. And uh, go to town. And I want to hear about everything. So, so thank you, Mike Deloach, for for sharing that wonderful donation. And everyone, if you can, give a, a thanks and a shout out to Mike for that because this contest would not be available without him. And Mike Deloach is going to be one of the judges, so it's an honor that we have that. So thanks, Mike. Three cheers for you, sir. And I hope you're still here. Let me know if you're still here. And let me see, we have bread in the house. We have bread. No, I wanted to say we have Paul in the house, so that is exciting. So always pleasure to have uh, Mr. Paul in the house from Indiana. And so, so everyone, thank you, Mike, for this, this opportunity. This is so exciting. Uh, a little discombobulated tonight, you know, a little bit of a late night, but uh, things are kind of uh, regulating. Every day, I want you to, uh, you'll be able to every day look on inkflingers.com and there will be uh, more information. Willie said he just signed up. Now, Willie, did you sign up for the contest or did you sign up for the online course, Willie? So if you signed up for the online course, I am really going to be excited. And I'm all excited if you signed up for the Laura Dern contest. And so... Uh, so thanks, Mike, and that is great. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go back to... Oh, man. Everyone, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Willie, for taking the online course. That means so much to me, and I'm so excited, and... Uh, I will have all those, I will have the inks and I will have the, 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 the drawing and also have the stencils and everything ready for you. I'll send that out tomorrow. So that is super exciting. So thank you so much, uh, Brad, for the super chat. And thank you, uh, Mr. Willie, for taking the online class. That is too cool. That is so amazing. Okay, so now we're going to go back. To working on this young lady here and so as you can see what we are working on is mostly the under the underside of her lower eyelid upper eyelid actually 
and now we can take this and now we can slowly start erasing those pencil lines now one of the things when you're doing this please be mindful that you don't want to erase on wet paper because wet paper is very malleable right and ah uh, thank you Willie I did have you in mind uh, with this class because Willie has been asking for something very similar for quite some time and so I'm so excited to hear your thoughts and everything and so you can see this little thing of uh, actually working on this eyelid seems like something very simple but in reality I believe it's uh, it's a very important element and remember the adjacent shapes often describe the shapes more than the shapes themselves and so that's something that I'm touching on right now and we're just gonna darken this crease here of her eye and remember everything we do on one eye we have to do on the other eye we don't have to do but you definitely want to do okay so now we can see where I'm gonna actually start to model this eye here and right here is your your retro orbicularis oculi fat which is a fat deposit which is on everyone's eye between the upper eyelid and the low and the and the eyebrow there's a fat deposit on the outside of the eye, eye socket so right now what I'm doing is I'm just sort of making that a three-dimensional form the more three-dimensional we make it the more believable it will be and that's when it comes down to how important it is to get a photograph that really shows the three-dimensional forms right if you have a very flat photo then the most you can do is create a flat painting but if you have a painting that is really showing the forms and making everything three-dimensional then of course you're gonna have a much easier time at it so that's exciting And I'm really excited about the uh, online class. And uh, so let's see. Patty says she has to leave. Oh, have a great night, Patty. Always a pleasure. And Willie says good night, Patty. And uh, and Willie says he's got to sleep too. See you Saturday, Willie. Thanks again about the online class, I online course. I really appreciate that. So that is uh, very cool. And uh, I will. Send you an email tomorrow letting you know that the, uh, the uh, contents are on their way. So very, very cool. So we're just going to continue uh, with her eye. And very slow and steady. That's the way we have to do it. We'll just continue. And you can see with the Extreme Patriot Arrow how I can get the ultimately ultimate in small tight details now her eye if I was to measure her eye I would say it is probably less than an inch as far as the size so that makes a big difference let me see if I can put a penny here so this is how small we're working and the extreme Patriot arrow can do it and to me for 149 is just amazing and it's right up there with the uh, with the Iwata custom microns and and uh, those airbrushes now I'm gonna wait for that to dry because I want to come in with some really nice beautiful intense um, uh, pastel work over there but I'm going to hold off because we never want to work on on wet paper right that will do more damage than good so that's important so it's always great to see Patty and Willie so that is always encouraging thank you so much for hanging out guys and once again sorry for the late start but I'm like Lou Gehrig you know I'm trying to keep the streak alive you know 
Honey says, not feeling great, so you're going to call a night. Honey, have a great night. Thanks for hanging out, and I really hope you feel better. Get some rest. Uh, that's always the best medicine, is to get some rest and relaxation. And you see now I'm just going to make sure that I get the sphere, you know, of her eye. So in the iris, you'll see that a lot of times the eye is actually in perspective. So you'll see a sphere. You'll see that, uh, that circle like kind of elongated or flattened out depending on the, the perspective of the pupil so that's what I'm looking at now I'm making sure that I'm getting that that uh, whole thing of that iris in perspective oh Wendy's got to give her cats uh, her cat some meds so that's important Wendy definitely take care of that All right, so you see how I'm developing her eye, right? And just like I did with the other eye. And of course, I always say that you want to make sure that when you are warming up, you warm up with the detail mixture because if you are a little rusty, which happens to all of us, you're doing it with the detail mixture. And so you're able to make adjustments and you're not playing for keeps. If you're working with the media mixture, you are definitely playing for keeps. Am I right? And once again, I just want to thank Mr. Brad for the super chat sticker. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Me and Brad have been working together. He's been in the mentorship program in January for three years. And his work is really doing amazing. Uh, you know, you, you should see the stuff that he's doing is just unreal. So very exciting to all my students I'm excited with. But Brad is my most tenured student. And so he's been with me the longest. And uh, it's just always great to see the development of my students. And you know what? I learn more from my students sometimes than... The other way around sometimes I think I should you know pay them <laughs> you know cuz when you know we all see things in a very fresh perspective am I right and that fresh perspective is really important especially when you get to my 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 position where I've been doing this for decades and you know, you kind of get set in your ways, which not not is always the best thing to do, right? Not always best to be so set in your ways. And when students look at things in a fresh perspective, it forces me to. And that's so healthy for any artist, you know, whether you've been doing it for, you know, a couple of months or several decades. So I appreciate that. Every one of my students... And I, you know, and I appreciate everyone coming to the live streams. Uh, thanks. Brad says that my classes are the best investments he's ever made. That means so much to me. Mr. Steve Leahy said Brad is a good human. Yes, that is so true. And as you are, Mr. Steve Leahy. And so, um, and let's see who else we got. And so that's cool. So I love when uh, people of the Ink Flingers community, uh, you know, really encourage one another and that's what we need we all need encouragement i need it you know that's for sure i'll be the first to say i'm needy when it comes to encouragement and you all are have been so encouraging to me i don't know what i would do without you i mean like the wednesday nights i always do the wednesday nights and i always uh, make sure i do the live stream sometimes late but rarely but like tonight was a late one but I always, uh, you know, want to be giving. You know, I always want to be someone where, you know, you can always say, well, Tim's going to be at that live stream and I'm looking forward to that and not letting you down. And Steve Leahy does that also on his Monday night live streams on, uh, on Facebook. So really check him out if you haven't. 
really amazing stuff and a great community as well. So if you, you know, Wednesdays at, at 6 o'clock p.m. on Facebook, check them out. You won't be sorry. You'll be very excited. Here's a good time for a paintbrush technique, right? So let's go and get some paint, paintbrush technique. That would be great. And Mr. Nameless Subscriber, always a pleasure. And uh, Nameless says at work, uh, today this cat he's never seen before showed up and was just chilling like he, like we weren't even there. Usually street cats are skittish. Oh, that's good. That's always, I love cats. You know, it's so fantastic. So Steve says that's how he found one of some of the best cats, one of the best cats he ever had. She was ten months old, and on her own and ready to have kittens. Oh, that is fantastic! Yeah. So you, and are you still you still have that cat, uh, Mr. Leahy? And um, cats are great pets, as are dogs. And I know we have dog lovers and we have cat lovers here and bird lovers. Colette has some really amazing birds. Love those birds. So I am going to get uh, a paintbrush. And I'm going to put some medium mixture. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. We're going to put some medium mixture in this cup here. Let's make this happen. Now, we have to find the medium mixture. And everyone knows who's watched my live stream. If I can't find it, it's either... What are the two things? Two possibilities. Extra credit. Let's see. If I can't find it, it's usually in two places. Let's see. That's true. That is so true. Learned a lot of techniques from Mr. Steve Leahy. A lot of techniques I use, such as the magnets. You know, I mean, he, he, he taught me about the magnets. Without him, I would not know. I would still be using different techniques that weren't as, that isn't as effective. So I'm just going to look for my trusty paintbrush. And that's a liner brush. And so I want to, when I do my paintbrush techniques, I always want to test out first. Right, so we're going to, uh, we'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I wanna test out this technique so I can really get in there. And also get rid of some excess water, right? So that's important. And Oh yeah, so Colette is a student of mine. We're in the, we are in the, uh, we do the mentorship program, which I also offer, and those are live classes that I do with Google Classroom, and her, her parrots they talk, and it's so funny, you know, and also they sound like a cat or the dog, so I have to ask Colette, is that the dog or the parrot? It's so funny, you know. Oh, great. So, so, uh, so Mr. Uh, Steve says that it was the first time he ever, uh, they were all there. She took care of everything and the kittens all went to great homes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, and she was your pet for years. That is really cool. So love to hear that. Yeah. You know, cats are fantastic. They kind of adopt us, don't they? And they kind of let us live at their house. They kind of adopt us and take over everything. That's what I love about cats. They are assertive, if anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ever so lightly, I'm going to kind of make that edge a little more hard, right? Just unsoften it. There we go. And then let's, let's make the uh, pupil nice and hard edged so i have the media mixture in there right and i'm just creating a harder edge here and i'm still doing a one second rule so 
so super important, right? And notice if I'm a righty, I always make sure that I have my ink and on the right side because I don't want to get my ink and kind of cross over just because been there, done that, had mistakes happen. Sun Studio Art of War, the best, uh, what is it? Is it Sun Studio Art of War? I don't think so. So, so basically, this doesn't have to do with Sun Tzu. The best defense is not to be there, right? So that's basically, I don't think that was Sun Tzu. So right now I'm going to come and shape this and really, really like not hold back. You know, give it my all. That's what we want to do. We want to give it our all. So, so once again, the uh, online course, which teaches you from start to finish with the stencils, uh, you know, with the, the Airbrush India ink and the white mixture and the white pastel and the sandpaper all for $149. And the link is in the description. Uh, so always remember that. If you can't attend my, my uh, mentorship program, this is definitely the, the next best step. And the great thing is, is that this technique is basically, it's a system, right? And that's how I feel. I feel that my technique is a system. And so I teach the system and also control and PSI and all those questions that, you know, you might have. So definitely excited about that and tell you all the hours that it took me to bring that together. I'm going to shift on over to her other eye real quick because I really loved how how like hardening that edge really, really helped when painting the beautiful Kelly McDonald here. Still haven't had a celebrity, you know, come on my class and say, hey, Tim, I really love the portrait, you know, not yet, but I know one day it's going to happen. I'm holding out hope. Now, as anyone here, uh, such as Steve Leahy or anyone who does live streams or even a portrait that you did of a celebrity, has anyone actually got in contact with you, Steve, and said, wow, that's a great portrait of me. Has that happened as of yet? If it did, then that's very hopeful to hear. And let's see. Uh, Steve says 100% true about the cats and Namus says uh, at Colette teach him any swear words <laughs> Meaning the pat the, the parrot and Colette says yes of yes, they curse <laughs> They have cognitive speech. They're awesome. They are awesome Nameless says that's nice Steve and making him want to get a cat now But the last one we had was little monster you know, that's cool. And so, so how are you liking Florida, Mr. Tone? Uh, let me know how it's going. I lived in Florida for eight years. It was rough at first, but it does get better. So if you are having a hard time getting acclimated, don't worry. Give it at least, give it at least all four seasons. And that's when you can make your real decision. So uh, it's a big move. It's a big culture shock, especially from New York City. The weather is amazing, you know, except for the hurricanes. But besides that, it's it's incredible. Now, you are going to be dealing in the summertime. Every four o'clock, you have like the worst thunderstorms in the history of man. Uh, you have lightning like you never saw before. And let's see. Uh... So Nameless says, uh, have I ever heard them curse during the classes? I'm going to just plead the fifth on that one, Nameless. <laughs> and uh, yes, Tone said it's a bit, bit of a rough start, but that's to be expected. You know, Northeast and the Southeast are different worlds. And anyone out there from the Southeast can definitely concur that the, the culture shock is... is is big on both levels right not just one so you know it's not easy for someone going in one direction or the other so i'm going to go ahead and work on her eye just a little bit more so here i can see something so this is dry so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to be a little daring 
and I'm just going to fix this because what I did is I had this eye come a little bit on the wide side in the middle so I'm see how I adjusted that very crucial and then here I want to make this nice and hard edge coming down and then just like so now so that is really cool Mr. Roy, Mr. Roy says, don't forget the snakes and the gators. Yeah, you can't forget them. Now, I was lucky. Uh, my parents moved when I, just before I graduated the National Academy School of Fine Arts, my parents moved to Kissimmee, which is outside of Orlando. And that's something you're going to know. When you know that someone is, is living in Orlando area or Florida, they don't say Kissimmee. They say Kissimmee. And so that's how you can tell if someone's a tourist. But right, we lived right on the golf course, and there was a lake right outside. But it was a man-made lake, so there was no gators, thank goodness. But you never know. People can put them in there. So, but yeah, it was beautiful. And, I mean, everything's so wide open. When you go to a supermarket, it's really hardly ever crowded like in the Northeast. So those things are just fantastic. Uh, that you're going to love. You're going to love that. Here was a culture shock for Florida. When you go to shopping, and it was so hilarious, when you go food shopping and you have like a big cart, the, the young man will actually take your cart to the car and load your groceries in your car. And I was like, unbelievable. So being in the Northeast, Number one, what are you doing with my groceries? Get, get your hands off my, my stuff. And then the second thing, you want to tip them. And they're like, no, no, we don't accept tips. And I'm like, wow, you're not in Kansas anymore, Tim. So that was definitely a culture shock. You're going to find things like that, good changes that are in Florida. You know, some nice things. So be prepared for some nice things. And then when you're in... Uh, in New York, right, in New York area, when uh, someone, you know, either at Walgreens or something, you know, you say, have a good day. Half the time, the person at the checkout counter will be like, yeah, right. <laughs> but when you're in Florida, they remember you from last time. They're like, how are you, Mr. Smith? And I'm like, oh, uh, a hi, you know, it kind of throws you off. So it's a different culture and things are moving a bit slower than what we're accustomed to in New York area. And you know what, like right here, so when you're in New York, you don't have an accent, right? I'm here in New York and New Jersey, I don't have an accent. I go down to Florida and I sound like Rocky Balboa. And they're like, oh, what part of New York are you from? So those, that's another thing that's gonna kind of freak you out, my friend. And, oh, gator meat is good meat, that's for sure, haven't had it yet. Brad says that we had snow there today. Wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. And <laughs> Steve says, worst drive he's ever seen are in Orlando. You know why? Because no one is from Orlando who's living there. So you have people from the UK. You have people from California. You have people from the Midwest. And it's like a free-for-all. <laughs> Nameless says uh, he thought that was a toothpick. So this right here, the, oh, okay, kind of looks like it, doesn't it? That's for sure. I heard good things about gator meat, but it is, it is lizard. So I'm kind of reluctant to eat lizard. So if I was hungry, you know that would be on my menu. Uh, now, Patrick, uh, you know, who comes on the live stream, who is a student of mine, he said when he... Uh, you know, so he's a chef, and whenever he prepared any kind of uh, lizard, like turtle or something like that, that their anatomy was totally different, and it was kind of jarring at first. So I thought that was interesting. Okay, so we have that eye, and then we're going to move on over to the eye on camera left. Now, do we have any eyelashes like we have on the eye on camera uh, actually, this is the eye on camera right. Camera left is what we were just working on. So I don't have any eyelashes going on here. She has eyelashes, but we can't see it in a certain lighting situation. So never make up things if you don't see it, right? Uh, always be true to your reference. 
Uh, you can accentuate the anatomy like I have done in this, but always be true to uh, the reference and be true to the anatomy, right? Always make sure, you know, that you're true to the anatomical forms. And then right here, the corner of her eye. So I want to hear about you all. So can anyone just very quickly tell me uh, what paintings you're working on? And just, you know, maybe a little snippet on it. I love to hear. That always encourages me hearing everyone and what they're working on. So I'm going to, as you can see, uh, see how we're working on her eyes. And, inten and that intensifies the painting. It really does. Working on her eyes intensifies the painting. And uh, Steve Leahy says, all this talk about gator meat is making him hungry. He needs to grab some food and turn in. Definitely, it's a late night. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Steve, for hanging out. Always a pleasure. And you take care of yourself and uh, hope to see you soon. And check out his live stream, 6 o'clock on Mondays on Facebook. And Brad says he's doing a painting of a cowgirl. That one is coming out great. The way that it's an India ink painting and uh, with airbrush and the way that he has the hard edges really, really makes an impact. So really wonderful to see that. So uh, very, very cool. And uh, I know that uh, Bob Squeeze is doing some great paintings. His work is, he he's doing some pastels using the India ink underpainting that is just, just out of this world. And so, Give a shout out to Mr. Bob, and let's see here. So let's let's move down to her nose, shall we? That's always a good thing. So let's uh, zoom in on her nose. We can always come back to her, uh, come back to her eyes. It's always good to let stuff dry anyway. Am I right? I'm right. I know it. Okay. So let's come over here. And bring this over so now you see she has such a cute nose and that's one of the things that I wanted to paint was this adorable nose that she has and uh, well she's just adorable all around but her nose and I really wanted to get that and so we're just gonna accentuate some areas where the light is just not getting there right your darkest darks are there because regardless of what happens, the light is just is just excluded. And where that light is excluded, that's going to be the intensification of your painting, right? So right here in the corner of her eye, right here, you don't see... I'm just going to intensify it just like this. And to me, that's going... See how doing that kind of intensifies her... So now I want to do this same thing in the corner of her mouth. And let's see. Oh, so, so very cool. So Bob says some portraits and some color studies. That's exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing that, Bob. Your work is incredible. Bob's uh, use of color is, is just incredible. Got a lot to learn from Bob. I do. And then we have Raul doing the famous dunk, the, uh, the Knicks John Stocks over Michael Jordan. Oh my God, that's going to be a great painting. But you know what? Between me and you, I know John uh, that uh, John uh, Starks paid for that. By Michael Jordan would take stuff like that personal. Have you ever read some of the interviews when someone kind of got you know rubbed uh, Michael's uh, fur the wrong way, like so to speak, and 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 uh, he would just like oh my God, he would always get them back. To hear what he did to uh, Bob Mar, not Bob Mar. <laughs> Who's the guy? Not Bob Marley. Bob Marley is the great singer. Uh, what's his name? Uh, last name Marley. He was with the Detroit Pistons. You guys remember? And someone said that you know he couldn't guard Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan just you know destroyed him. And then what he did uh, with the guy from the Utah Jazz, which is amazing. So, Raul, your work is just stunning. The, I, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the work that you did, I believe you did a painting of uh, Lawrence Taylor, the great LT, and that was just incredible. Uh, 
So love it, you know, definitely. Uh, so yeah, your color is, your color paintings are just fantastic, Raul. So when I see your work on Facebook, I'm just blown away. Just blown away. So now I'm coming in and uh, working on her lips and as they part. And this is where, you know, the rubber meets the road. This is why we work so hard during the whole painting, right? To come to this point. You see that parting of the lips right here? Very beautiful. And you can see where you leave off, you know, not necessarily, uh, you know, the spaces that you leave are sometimes more important than what you put in. And then right here, just kind of intensify that nostril, which I love. And... Okay, so now, so the thing is you have the paintbrush in your hand. Oh, thank you, my friend. Raul says I inspire him as well. That means a lot to me. And uh, yes, I definitely see you every week, my friend. And uh, so that's fantastic. And there's a dual admiration there, definitely. And let's see. So I have this. Okay, so we have the, we have the, pen, the airbrush, not the airbrush, the paintbrush in our hand, right? So let's make good use of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to start doing some of those errant hairs, right? Some of these hairs that we see off to the side. <laughs> oh, you're making, oh, Jesso, right. You have to try, uh, Raul, one of these days I'll send you uh, my marble dust mixture. Add some marble dust to your Jesso. I think you're going to love it. It gives some texture, which is really amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and we're going to see some of the finishing touches I do with her hair here. And so right here, we'll have some errant hairs that go, and you want to be quick about it. See how nice and quick about it? And that's on the darker side. And then you can do some lighter sides like over here, just sort of kind of come down here like that. And so, what I can do is actually get rid of more moisture from the paintbrush and then I could actually go even super light here. So let's see, I'm just going to drag it along like so. So if we zoom out, you can definitely see how those little uh, errant hairs really work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of the dark ones, but some of the lighter ones will actually put the light mixture in and on the paintbrush, you know? So that would be really great. And let's see here. So I'm very, very very excited about about this painting. Uh, this is actually part six. So we actually finished this painting quite quickly, didn't we? And uh, so that was really, really amazing. You know, but I really think uh, the latest thing that I have been doing is getting into uh, the anatomy of the face and the shoulders and the uh, the face, the shoulders, the clavicle area, uh, the sternum, that really has made a difference in my work. And I definitely want to, um, definitely, definitely uh, want to be sharing that in the live stream, some of the anatomical information that I'm getting, you know. So one of the things I've actually been doing is, is actually paying attention to some of the journals of plastic surgeons and nobody knows the facial anatomy like a plastic surgeon so that's where I'm getting and I think that's going to take it to the next level and that's what I want to do 
So once again, we're coming in with our, our paintbrush and we're going, and this is the medium mixture. So I'm doing the darker hairs with the medium mixture. And you can see now we can really kind of pump up that intensity, right everybody? And um, so let's see here, everything looks good. And so thanks everybody who's coming to the uh, pastel live stream on Saturday. It's getting very popular. So Saturdays at eight, I do the pastel live stream. And I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to it every Saturday night and uh, looking forward to seeing you all. And many of those who are here on the airbrush live stream are there and uh, giving great comments. And it's really, it's really a lot of fun. Mr. Mark Webb, how are you? Good to see you, my friend. So glad you are here. We are painting the beautiful, the talented, the stunning, uh, Kelly McDonald. So um, uh, glad you're here. We're kind of doing the the last episode of this, and I'm going to be doing some of the finishing touches off camera, of course. And but you see how coming in with this paintbrush technique, using the medium mixture, it really is a lot of fun. So when I first started airbrushing, I studied with a gentleman called David Morton. And one of the things that David Morton said, which I thought was poignant, uh, and I, he always had this 70-30 rule, that 70% of the paintings in airbrush and the other 30% is in other stuff. You know, whether it be regular paintbrush techniques or, you know, colored pencils, pastel, whatever but having that 70-30 rule. And basically, what I felt was, not that it was a, uh, you know, not that it was a dogmatic uh, thing to say, or I just, you know, felt that, that I must go 70-30, but for me, it kind of liberated me to go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and just be more free and not worry what people think if it's not 100% airbrush. So, in reality, it's all about doing the best work you can, right guys? And Mark is familiar with the 70-30 rule. So that's encouraging. So I appreciate that, Mark. And yeah, so Mark does some really great work himself. And let's come in here. Yeah, the 70-30 rule is so important in my work. And here I can come in and so remember, you know, how we were working on first working on the helmet and then working on the, the large lights and darks. And now we're getting into the real individual hairs, right? So we were painting the forest and groups of trees, then uh, and then, you know, smaller groups of trees. And now we're doing trees and even leaves. So if we started out like painting leaves at first it would be quite bizarre right quite crazy so oh wow so uh mark says that he's been struggling lately don't worry about that uh mr mark it's when you're struggling uh it just means you're growing so stick with it always email me if you have any technical questions you know i'm always happy to help mark so uh but yeah you know it's all about the learning that's why we have learning, uh, not learning, <laughs> growing pains, not learning pains. Uh, so definitely you're, you're expanding your circle. So that is part of it. And uh, Mr. Bob says, squeeze, he agrees with the 70-30 rule for sure. Yeah, you do it with mastery, uh, Bob, definitely. Uh, just incredible. And yeah, you have to be free from dogma in everything in life. And uh, painting and artwork is the same. You know, I'm very strong on my beliefs, but never the only way, right? It's just my way. And, but I have to be open-minded. So when I was a young man going to the National Academy, I was very close-minded. I was like, I'm a follower of Angra and David, and those are only the true painters. And I won't look at work that's done in the 20th century or the 20, well, the, the uh, 
21st century wasn't there yet. And so I was like, I don't only look at, I don't look at work done in the 20th century, all that. And did I grow, right? And, and now it's like, I can take from Mark Rothko, I can take from any of the abstract expressionists and take something from, learn something from, let's say, Rothko, or Klein, or, or uh, Pollock, and that's important. We could learn something from uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, even though the work is like the antithesis of what we do, we can still learn from it, and we can still take something from that. So always remember that. And Mark says, he will, thanks. One year and a half, it kind of feels like I've gone nowhere. Oh, definitely. We'll talk, Mark, and let's see if we can uh, maybe, you know, what I like to do when that happens to me, I like to go back to basics, right? You know, like even when I was playing baseball, you know, and, you know, men's volleyball in college, I was an athlete in another incarnation my, when I was uh, in my 20s and teens, when I would go into a slump, I would just go back to my, my fundamentals and just go back to the basics. And that always, always kind of snapped me out of that, right? And it's good because, like I said in the beginning, you know, as we get more seasoned at art, as artists, we tend to have our mannerisms. And a mannerism is just, you know, you get into a habit. And they're not always good habits. Sometimes they're habits that are getting in the way of seeing things correctly, right? So, so sometimes having to go back to basics really helps to kind of shake out those uh, cobwebs. And not necessarily cobwebs because a lot of the mannerisms happen when you're working all the time, right? You kind of uh, cut corners sometimes and don't realize it, you know? And... Uh, and let's see, Mark says uh, he has last week nothing but shading and strokes. That's exactly it, Mark. Uh, that's exactly it. Go back to the basics. Go back to, you know, painting a, an egg, right? I do that. I go back to painting an egg. I don't know if anyone's seen the egg that I did uh, in digital. I did a digital egg. <laughs> And it was such a great learning experience and sort of brought me back to, okay, you have to do more of that with my portraits, right? So that's what I was telling myself. I have to do more of that with my portraits. So, you know, make things round. Uh, look for the transitions and all of those things that are really going to just make a huge difference in your work, you know? Oh, thanks, Mark. Mark remembers. He said it looked good. Yeah, and it was, and it was art for art's sake, right? It wasn't a commission or anything like that. It was just the exploration of painting, you know, the exploration of light, and that really helps me. You know what also helps me? Are doing so. This is great. So sometimes when I get, let me go get it. And I know I've done this before, but I think this is gonna help you, Mark. I'll be right back, sir. excuse to get a water because I'm dying of thirst my friends so when I get kind of like everything becomes way too precious right um, I like to just step it back and how I step it back is by doing work that isn't about anything but doing some paintings right that's what it's all about right so what I do is I get these sketchbooks and what I do is I'll, I'll work in the sketchbook and I'll do small airbrush portraits that are never going to be anything but in the sketchbook. And this is where I explore. And let me see. So here is one painting I did of Halle Berry. 
So you can see I put my reference here, I have my drawing here, and basically I just explore, just have fun. And that kind of uh, gets me back to why I did it in the first place, right? And it really makes a difference. And Brad says uh, he's sure the greatest masters of olden times would have many technology at their disp uh, would have any technology at their disposal at the time to get the best results. Yes, definitely, Brad. Uh, the reason why you don't see digital paintings from the old masters is only because they didn't have it. So you can see here that I worked out a lot and I was able to push and experiment more than if I, you know, if I'm doing precious paintings like this, I'm a little more careful. Here, I don't expect anyone to see it, but you guys, right? So here's one I did of seep in sepia, just playing with it and not worrying about how it comes out and just, uh, you know, moving around. I did some paintbrush techniques and add some uh, white pastel to this. And so, you know, basically now this one, this one came out really good. So sometimes when you do this, you end up with these gems, right? So what I did was I took a little piece of uh, my Canson paper and I taped it to this side of my airbrush, I mean my pad, and then I have the reference here. And then I just worked and I was just free. I wasn't really thinking of doing anything special, but those are the times when things accidentally just happen and they're really beautiful because I was really exploring and pushing my technique to that next level, right? And so that's what I want you to do is I want you to just do these little pieces and just not worry about how they're coming out and just get back to that beautiful time when we were just experimenting. So here's another one. You know, I have my reference here and I just played and you can see here, I, I did something interesting. I put Frisket over her. And so then I just started doing some crazy Jackson Pollock type of water techniques. And uh, you can just see how much fun that was. And that's where, you know, we get back to the whole thing of, you know, let's just have fun, you know. And then when we do our precious paintings, then we could, you know, take what we learned from there, you know. And so, uh, so yes, so Bob says agreed. Caravaggio highlighted his subjects with the mirrors. That is amazing, yes. I read about that and how, you know, the light would move just perfectly. You know what else I found, Bob, that was really interesting about Caravaggio? There's no, there's not one pencil line in any of his works. And I find, or any kind of uh, drawn lines. They didn't have pencil back then. They had, uh, I think they had compressed graphite and they had charcoal at the time. But there's no drawing survived. So definitely proof of that so yeah wonderful wonderful point bob and uh, mark says uh, uh fun stuff he's been learning uh, with adobe illustrator lately yeah and making stencils and portraits that is amazing and uh oh and bob says great to see my sketchbook thank you my friend i appreciate that and mark also says uh the sketch is better than his final work definitely sometimes right Sometimes because it's fresher, we're not we're not worried about how it's coming out. So that's what I really get from that. So I started this live stream at ten o'clock. So I'm actually it's gonna be a midnight live stream, everybody. That's the first time I think I went to midnight. And let's see how many people will will stick around. <laughs> You don't know how thirsty you are sometimes until you're actually taking a drink of water. That's amazing. Okay. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Nameless says, agree on, agrees with Mark on both points. And that is cool. Yeah, so great discussion we're having today about kind of reeling back the technique and kind of like opening up to you know, being more free with our work. 
and that's important. So right here in the reference, it was softer here, but I wanted to make it a hard edge. I just wanted to accentuate her beautiful jawline. So there are times when you're going to be a little more free with your reference, right? And that's important, to, to be a little more free. And Mr. Dwayne says when he gets into an artistic funk, he strips it back and paints just parts, like a page of just eyes and leaves. That's a great, great idea. Yes, definitely. And that's it. You know, we, we get back to the basics, right? Get back to, you know, if we're pitchers, right? Major League pitchers. We get back to just playing catch and getting back to the mechanics of just throwing the ball and then just building from there we can see the aberrations uh, or the little uh, the little mannerisms that we can fix you know that's important and nameless says he prefers late night streams although he's sore and tired from work so can't promise to make it through that's definitely understandable I'm so glad you're here now so that's that's amazing so Definitely appreciate that. And let's see here. So you can see how I kept that hard edge. And let me see if I have the picture of her so I can show you. Oh, nope, that's not it. I'm going to bring in the picture of Kelly. Let's see if I can do that. Let's make this happen or try. So I'm going to go to image. And now I'm going to look for Kelly. And... Uh, where are you, Kelly? Miss McDonald. Mrs. McDonald. She's married. Uh, let's see. So I come here. I got to go to a different hard drive. And so also a question I'm going to draw out to you. How has technology made your painting better or maybe streamlined your, your processes? So I'd love to hear. And what I'm going to do, when I'm going to start talking about that particular topic, I've always loved technology, and technology has really made a big difference in my work, in my teaching, uh, you know, how I can share uh, technique with my students. So I would say right up to, you know, the education that I had in art in my early years, I think technology is is very similar in importance to to uh, shaping me as a uh, as a painter and artist so here's Kelly and oh there she is okay Kelly so so now you can see the reference so you see my reference of Kelly right there so maybe I can make her a little bit smaller okay there we go Okay, so that's my reference. And you can see here how I kind of took liberty and made a little bit harder edge right there. And that was just an, an artistic decision. Hey, Patrick, how you doing, my friend? Always, quite, always amazed to hang out with you. And we, uh, uh, we mentioned you before in some of your great culinary, uh, culinary uh, talents. So I'm so glad you're here. And so, yeah, so I'm actually going to be here until midnight tonight. So this is like an open all night live stream. <laughs> the 7-Eleven version of the Tim's live stream, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nameless says, feels like a guy that went 10 rounds in punching bag. Oh, boy. So you had a rough day at work. And let's see. Uh, so let's see. Very cool. And Dwayne says, computers and printers have, and with vinyl cutters, when he started, there were no such things. Me too. There were no such thing as those. And not only that, with my classical education at the Art Students League, National Academy School of Fine Arts, Long Island University, any technology was severely frowned upon. And thank God that I decided not to go and stay with that dogma, right? And that's, that's just dogma, right? And I think dogma is not, any dogma is not, is not good. So, so that's why, you know, it's always great to break new grounds and, and to go your own way. Am I right, Dwayne? That's what we have to do. We have to just bust through that. There are no rules here. And so that's important. 
So Mr. Patrick and I are doing a really fun painting of Mo from the Dree Stooges coming out really good. His his Mo is really looking fantastic. And I also painted the same picture with uh, Mr. Roy Color Graphics and his came out really fantastic as well. So very cool. Yes, you make your own rules as you go as long as it's within the confines of excellence, right? And that's what we do. And you know, and that's important. Uh, it's important to uh, have that freedom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick says that his mo looks like a stooge for sure. That's cool. And, uh, and uh, so Mark says that blows. And uh, what exactly blows? I'm not sure. <laughs> I definitely want a judge's ruling on that one, Mark. Let's see. Uh, oh, no. Okay, so you're talking about nameless. Uh, understating boss was all over me, white on rice. Yes, that does suck. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a bad boss is, is really, really horrible. So I definitely feel for you there. We've all been there, right? Oh, and Bob says that tech has helped him a lot, particularly digital sculpting in Blender and ZBrush. Seems to inform rendering in real non-digital media. Wow, that's amazing. And I admire you, Bob, because I have tried uh, Blender several times and I was just overwhelmed. Now, were you self-taught or did you actually take classes in Blender? Because... Uh, that's a rough program. That's not easy. You know, that's that's not for the faint at heart, <laughs> you know. <laughs> a blender. And uh, so Clutch says that his job fixes problems by hiring more bosses. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need more supervisors, right? More bosses, more bosses. Uh and I'm sure being a chef, you heard that too many chefs burn the soup or something like that. Is it soup? I think that's it. Um, not sure. Let's put on the uh, her face only shield. I like that one because it keeps everything clean. So I don't do any overspray on her face. We worked so hard up to this point, right? So we are going to uh, go ahead and and work on that let's see i love this part of the painting i really do it it's uh it's fun everything you do right now is kind of enhancing things and too many chefs ruined the pot oh i love it hey wendy you're back how are you wendy says she's gonna learn blender so when you learn you have to teach me wendy all right so is that a deal uh that is cool and Clutch says he can't draw, so tech has been a huge turning point. Well, that's the thing. Uh, tech will hopefully help, help you to become a better draftsman, which is amazing. And that is so true. When I did that egg, I became a better airbrush painter. I became a better pencil artist. So think about that. It's almost like the hidden thing, you know. It's like what uh, the traditionalist, traditionalist would say is bad. They're actually giving bum advice, so uh, it's not their fault. It's just, you know, what their teachers told them and so on and so on. But digital art will help you grow in your regular painting. And then today, you know, uh, we have a lot of people who, you know, who print out their work. When you print out a digital painting, it just comes to life, doesn't it? And that's just a great feeling. And... Uh, Blender is good, Wendy, Mark says, and Brad says, if his boss gets on his case, he'll just retire. <laughs> That's good to hold off of them, hold over him, right? Definitely. And Dwayne says that he learned to airbrush old school from a guy who did murals on stuff like vans and show cars. And how did that go? Because your work is very tightly detailed. I mean, I really love what you do. Uh, so when you learned on somebody from somebody who probably taught you large scale. And how did you bring that down to working very tight and small? Uh, I'd love to hear your your education story from that. That would be cool. And 
So Brad said, you know, Nameless says, lucky you have that option, Brad. They can't replace him either. No one will deal with the you know what of his job requires. But if he does quit his job, he'll still have to deal with the fail. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, gets complicated, right? And um, yeah, it is. No matter what you do, it's always going to be in, you know, a certain degree of complication, whether you work for yourself or work for somebody else. And, and with other bosses. <laughs> uh, definitely. So now that I have her covered, I have a little more freedom to actually come in with my paintbrush. And let's, let's work on some of these hairs over here. And we have some nice darks that are coming out from over here that we can just be more free of not going over and that's that's good you know it's like technology just it just to me it enables me to be a much better teacher a much more effective teacher and uh, you know it's not always the results of the painting that's important but how much that the student learns and there's nothing better than than using you know digital art to really help a student along and I really love that. Oh, let me put my my ink flingers over here. There we go. So so you uh, know how to reach me at inkflingers.com. And once again, the uh, online class, the online course, there's a difference between courses and class, of course. Of course, no pun intended. And um, so it's available, link in the description and you can just check out the course and that's going from a painting like this from beginning to end you know comes with the instead of the airbrush india inks comes with the white mixture the pastel sandpaper the line drawing the stencils so you can follow along very exciting and so i was excited i never wanted to do an online course unless i knew that it could be effective and mirror what i do in my mentorship programs and uh, you know the courses that I'm doing now uh, you know in like Google Classroom and everything so I'm very excited to share that with you guys and I was in eight years in the making everybody eight you know 2009 so we're looking at 12 13 years and I finally did it and so that that was a really important landmark moment for me really important so and people like drew blair and marissa really inspired me and in how they did their classes which is really important and so nameless says uh tim you're lucky that you are your own boss he understands comes with more responsibility and the weight on your shoulders but uh, it is the only answer to you. The only answer to yourself. Oh, Marissa Tomali, uh, is that her name? Melissa Osterly. Oh, so look her up. She's really fantastic. Her work. Uh, I'll type her name in the description. She's such a good artist. And uh, I'm sure you know her work definitely. Marista Osterley is really amazing. And Dwayne says, over the years, he's kept pushing himself and his equipment to the limits and beyond. And he started airbrushing at 12 and 50. We're the same age, my friend, Mr. Dwayne. So that is cool. So have a little, pra a lot of practice under your belt, right? And uh, so that's really cool. So uh, very interesting how you... So it's all like you, you basically, you learn and then it's about practice, right? That's definitely it. And, uh, and uh, so Mark says, like you did, uh, great skill, Dwayne, definitely, definitely, definitely. And uh, Mark says, uh, at Dwayne, best way to learn side by side, doing it old school way, all paper technique, all templates and such, lots of taping. Yeah, that's the old school method. And yeah, those those people who have been carrying the torch 
of airbrushing over the years we really we really owe him a debt of gratitude you know mr you know like kent lind you know such a huge uh steve Leahy, um you know just the greats you know drew blair marissa osterley uh jonathan pantaleone which i got a chance to study with in two workshops uh you know, just the list goes on. Uh, Corey St. Clair, just, oh my God, just these guys are so incredible. And they carried that torch, you know, and we owe a, a huge debt of gratitude to them. And uh, so they were an inspiration when I was just starting. And uh, like Kent Lind, just amazing, amazing painter, right? You know, anyone seen his work is just like enthralled by it. You know, just really amazing. And uh, let's see. And Clutch says that's why he likes the mentorship. It's pretty close side by side, definitely. The mentorship is a really wonderful opportunity. Now, I think I had the equivalent of a Harvard, a Harvard University education in art. Uh, it was traditional, learning about, you know, watercolors and oils and pastel, airbrush, no, but but p drawing and all of that and composition and color theory, right? Learned all about that. And, uh, but I never had that one-on-one -on -one experience, but the mentorship program really gives that. And now with my online course, it definitely emulates that. And you can see that you get that one-on-one. -on -one. You're hearing me talk as I'm painting, as you're painting, and you have the ability to freeze it, go back, you have, and once you have the online course, you can watch it over and over again. And you can stop, go back to a certain spot. So those are the things I didn't get, even with my level of education when I was young. But now my job is to try and, uh, you know, kind of improve on that with technology. So technology has enabled me to be uh, the teacher I want. And also how I really work out my class, I think about what I would have wanted when I was going to art school. You know, what are some of the things I wish I had? Now, Harvey, I studied with the, the late, great Harvey Dinnerstein for several years in his studio at the National Academy. And, um, you know, I was a scholarship student there, and, you know, I was uh, one of the young guns at the at the National Academy, but I only really got instruction from Harvey maybe two or three times during the class, and that was it, and then I was on my own because there were other students that he had to deal with and teach as well. Sometimes the class was like 30, 40 students at a time painting from the model. So now with today's technology, it's so streamlined, and what it could do is actually... Uh, kind of put your art education on steroids, right? And that is so important. So that's what I love about technology, on how it takes, like how, right? Do you agree, uh, Dwayne, today people can learn so much faster? And Squeeze says that he's got you youngsters beat. No way, unbelievable. Look at that. So honestly, the energy that Bob was given, I thought he was you know, in his 40s, so kudos to you, Bob, you know, we're young at heart, right, we got to keep that, keep our mind young, I still think I'm 17, but my body says no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it does get easier, yes, it does, and so really cool, so very inspiring, thank you for sharing that, uh, Mr. Bob. And Dwayne says, you'll get there, Mark. Just keep it fun. Yes, definitely. So true. And Nameless says, just looked at, looked her up, and her work is amazing. Marissa, amazing painter. Very sweet person as well. And uh, let's see. Brad says, sound like this online course is the best thing uh, to your live classes. It really does. It kind of works together. And so, and also, I'm going to keep these live streams so you could work the online course and then look and see how I do it in the live stream. So really works out really well. And uh, Dwayne says, also Tim, uh, his inspiration for stunning airbrush was artists like Geiger, Frazetta, Vallejo, and the like. Oh yeah, so basically 
You're talking about the great illustrators of the 80s, right? I was at in the art school at the 80s, and everyone loved Frazetta, including myself. Geiger. I remember seeing Geiger. My dad used to be a subscriber to Omni Magazine. So remember, Geiger was always in the Omni Magazine. Uh, yeah, his work is just incredible. Have you seen the work of Bob Peake? Bob Peake and... Uh, have you seen his work, uh, uh, Squeeze? Bob Peake is just an amazing illustrator. Painter. It's kind of hard to decipher from the two, right? It's a... It's definitely one and the other, right? I don't think there's much of a distinction. But uh, Bob Peake did the uh, painting of um, Apocalypse Now, you know, with the red face of Marlon Brando. It's just this, uh, I hate using the word, but it's an iconic kind of image, right? It really is amazing. And so I was so inspired by the illustrators so when I was in art school, I was studying general illustration. But we all know what happened in the 90s, right? Illustration went totally digital. So that whole kind of being a painter and, you know, painting romance, novel, book covers and everything kind of went away. And so that kind of happened. So that kind of roughed me up in the early stages of my professional art career. And Clutch says he don't know, uh, he don't know about notice, but made him a superstar for sure oh like uh, does that mean uh, uh, clutch are you talking about uh, Frazetta or Geiger right and Dwayne says definitely Tim on the Omni the yeah, Omni magazine my dad was a real big fan of science fiction I miss him and Mark said made tons of cash or royalties oh yes he did definitely and Dwayne says, never took an art class. Learned from drawing covers of fantasy books. Wow, that's amazing, Bob. I always, uh, Dwayne, I always admire self-taught artists. I was blessed to have that education, and that was very helpful. Uh, I'm thankful for that, but also admire the self-taught out there. And Clutch says, Geiger's art also what kick-started uh, Tipper Gore from, uh, to form the PMRC. Oh, really? Now, I don't know what the PMRC is, so uh, that's interesting. Oh, so Bob knows who Peek is. Did many great movie posters. Yeah, I had a teacher called, Mr. his name no, he was called, his name was Mr. LeMay, and he taught me life drawing. And studying in New York City, a lot of these great illustrators were rubbing shoulders with other artists, and Mr. LeMay talked about, you know, his friendship with Bob Peake and how illustration made him a millionaire. And just one time he talked about Bob Peake and he saw this painting that he liked and it was several, several tens of thousands of dollars. He just went in there and bought it. And so that was like, oh my God, I can be an artist and make a lot of money. And then the illustration world went and that kind of killed it. Oh, and Dwayne knows about Peake. Wonderful. So I'm not the only one. So that is cool. Geiger, definitely, Patrick. And uh, so Clutch says, old punk band put a poster of Geiger's number five in one of the albums. Her son got it for Christmas. Oh, oh, is that what happened? Yeah, so Geiger's work was, is at times, can be controversial, right? And so I can definitely see how you know, some people would be like, oh, my God, you know, there was a time I would say in the early 2000s where I did a lot of shock value paintings. And that was interesting. You know, we all have those stages. Uh, I'm not doing much shock value anymore. I'm just really worrying about technique. Now, as far as like content, my work was very narrative in the early 2000s. And then even in the 2010s, now I'm basically concentrating on just beautiful work, you know, just concentrating on the aesthetics. So that's interesting. Just some great conversation happening today, huh? Really love it. Really love the conversation. And you know what? I really am enjoying, you know, talking about the old illustrators. So 
So, Bob and Dwayne, have you guys had a chance to be in New York City and go to the Society of Illustrators? Uh, illustration was such a big thing that they had a special society, a special club where illustrators in New York could hang out and, you know, have some cavassier and smoke cigars. And so illustration has definitely, you know, gone from that. It was a real important uh it was an important career, right? And so I was at the end of it, and then it just now you can you even can you even major in illustration anymore? And Mr. Clutch says uh, PMRC Parents Music Resource Center. Oh wow! So Geiger was kind of a catalyst for that. So that is so Dwayne said never made it. I used to go there when I was in high school. I went to the high school of art and design. And we used to go there. And then when I was at the National Academy, it was still in its, the death throes of its heyday. It's still there, and they have exhibitions there, but there's not old-time illustrators hanging out there like in the old days, you know. A lot of them are gone. What is it? Uh, Mark English was another one. Uh, just so many. So many of those uh, old-time illustrators. Just a bygone era, right, everybody? And I oh, would like to go there. Oh, it's great. So you see stuff by Leyendecker. You see stuff by Mark English, Norman Rockwell, original paintings. Uh, who else? Some of the real big names. I think you can see a Bob Peak there. Really just amazing. The Hildebrand Brothers. <clears throat> Do you guys remember the Hildebrand Brothers? They did some amazing illustrations. Uh, so... Definitely, if you're ever in New York, definitely check that out. Just incredible. So still have the detail mixture in the airbrush. And we're just kind of doing the finishing touches. So just enjoying this amazing conversation. So don't... Re yes, definitely, Dwayne. And so one of the things that we want to uh, uh, really touch on is that, you know, it doesn't matter how long a painting takes to finish right we're just going to keep working and you and what do you all think of the phrase i don't know if it was picasso always some people say someone else coined the phrase but a painting is never finished it's always abandoned do you guys feel that way that you know you're working and you're working and you feel like you can just do it forever and never get finished and you just have to say you know what time to move on to the next piece what are your thoughts on finishing a painting? I think that's a very important uh, topic. And Mark says, bucket list for sure. I believe it's in the 60s on the east side, uh, right around Hunter College. And a uh, very beautiful uh, gallery and everything. You'll really enjoy it. And, uh, and, and Clutch says, and keep your drink covered. <laughs> So Mark says, watch your wallet and head in New York City. Yeah, New York, I love New York. And I live five miles from New York, but I don't go in as much because it has been going crazy with the crime lately. So I'm not as uh, keen to go in all the time. And and Mark says, and tie yourself to a post. In the, you, you definitely don't want to go near the, uh, you know, you want to step back towards the wall. That's the best advice I can give. Just a little bit of prevention. You're not going to be drone in front of the tracks that way. And Dwayne says, he laughs and says he never finished a painting in his life. <laughs> that's a great I, That's a great quote. You should coin that. He never finished a painting in his life. It's everyone else who thinks it was done. I love it. That's exactly, that's exactly what I feel is that, you know, you never really get to the point where you're saying, ah, this is done, you know. What I'm going to do is remember I was doing the, uh, the light mix, the, the medium mixture. I'm going to try putting some uh, of the detail mixture and the paintbrush. I think that would be cool. So let's give that a shot. So I'm going to take it from my airbrush. I'm going to take the detail mixture from my airbrush. And you can see... Now, it might take, it might not take. And what we're going to do is going to do some of those light hairs over here. Let's see how it goes, right? There's only one way to find out. 
Let's zoom in. And then right here, we're gonna, now notice I hold the brush way out here, right? I hold it, I'm not choked up on it because then you're putting too many pounds per square inch. So I'm way back here, notice how far back I am. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drag, I'm just gonna drag it, you know, and just kind of touch it. And you see how much lighter we can go. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm just gonna, kind of drag it. See how I kind of drag that and just very, very softly. And you can see it's just, it's really, so the detail mixture, so when you're doing the hairs, the darker hairs, use the medium mixture and then immediately go to the uh, detail mixture to do the really light hairs. But you want to drag the brush, right? Just drag it. So one of the great things I learned from uh, Mr. Drew Blair, and just like I think one of the things he was talking about in one of his great magazine articles in the Airbrush Action, uh, how hair next to a light background is dark and hair next to a dark background is light. And I thought that was really like a game changer with me and just learning. Look how beautiful when we work with that lighter, uh, we can get those really light hairs. Let me see what conversation I was missing. Patrick says he could imagine you could be working on a painting forever, and at some point you have to call it finished. Right, exactly, but a very good point of argument, right? When do we know? And I think, have you ever seen the movie Pollock with Ed Harris? And in the end, he had an interview, I believe it was with uh, Life Magazine, and in that, one of the persons says to him, how do you know you're finished done with it? How do you know when you're finished a painting? And so it's reported that um, Pollock said, how do you know when you're done making love? You just don't, you just know. And I thought that was very interesting. So I like that point as well. And Dwayne says his biggest problem is knowing when to say when. Yes, me too, when it comes to hot fudge. <laughs> exactly. That definitely is important to know when to say when, right, sir? Just do abstract, Dwayne. It's done when you say it's done. That's true, right? Uh, definitely. No one can tell you when you're done when you're doing abstract expressionism. And most of his stuff is done from your mind. Really? Dwayne, that's really amazing. Now that's that's incredible. And, uh, and Mark says his problem is he never finishes. Well, that's something we can always work on, right? Definitely. And, oh, thank you, Bob. Bob says, fine brush technique. I appreciate that, sir, most definitely. It's all about how you hold the brush, right? So if I was choked up, and you can see I can get light, but if I hold it here and kind of just drag it, I and then I could kind of let go and kind of pick up like hair does, hair will actually disappear and reappear. And so it's so great with the with the detail mixture. It's already almost translucent like hair is anyway. Oh, here's a great artist, Alphonse Mucha. Alberto Vargas and J.C. Leyendecker were major influences for you. Definitely, you know, these are the forgotten people of the illustration world, right? And I definitely, Leyendecker, his profiles are just amazing aren't they it's so so amazing and clutch says if he could paint what's in his mind he'll end up in no flies <laughs> i think our, all, all of us are in the same boat so don't feel bad there mr patrick and uh, vargas is one of yes vargas is amazing i love mucha an illustrator uh i know he was a czechoslovakian and if you see, I know you have seen, uh, uh, Bob, some of his huge paintings uh, that he did that aren't illustration-like are just amazing as well. But now you see Vargas's work, and then when we look at, so we have Vargas, and then when we look at uh, another great, Patrick Nagel. What do you guys think of Patrick Nagel's work? He did the, uh, the illustrations for Playboy back in, in the 80s. Just amazing, right, everybody? He kind of kind of spur on that whole 80s aesthetic, didn't he? I mean, he was really influential, 
you know, the whole Miami Vice look and, I mean, you know, the whole fashion was really influenced by by Mr. Patrick Nagel, who was influenced by, by uh, you know, Alphonse Mucha, right? Definitely. And so really very, very cool. This is great conversation because, you know, speaking with you guys, I haven't had a chance to talk about illustrators in such a long time. And uh, so, uh, so Nameless says he recalls a time when he was talking about movies, about art, and has anyone ever seen a movie called Big Eyes? Yes, I've seen that movie. That was a very interesting and sad movie. Yeah, that somebody could actually do that to that poor woman, you know, steal her work like that. That was horrible. And uh, Mark says his, uh, he's glad, his head is full like that. He's glad he's not the only one. And I'd rather paint off his head than a photograph. And then Dwayne says, not at all, Mark. It's been that way a long time as he can remember. And uh, uh, so Nameless says, if it's in Playboy, it must be good. Uh, Definitely the illustrations that uh, that Mr. Nagel, he has been very influential. So you see a lot of the lines and the beautiful contours. That's all Nagel and also Angra, you know. So it's interesting how we are sort of an amalgam or like, you know, in Patrick's case, you know, he's a chef. It's like a recipe. Our art is a recipe of our influences. And Wendy says, yes. Uh, and Dwayne says, uh, Louis Royo. I've seen his work several years ago. I think he was doing a ceiling that was just breathtaking, right? And Mark says, is there anyone else out there that illustrates like Vargas? There are. You know, there's a lot out there and a lot of great illustrators. And it's so great to see. And illustrators are fantastic. They just don't know how good they are. When I first came in, so I was in the airbrush, and not in the airbrush world, in the fine art world. And when I came to the airbrush world back in like 2009, 2010, I was saying to myself, these guys don't know how good they are. I mean, they're so busy doing commissions and everything like that. They don't know how good they are. And I thought that was so interesting. And so my work really grew uh, on the shoulders of a lot of these amazing airbrush painters. So again, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to actually get rid of some excess water. I do what is called a dry brush technique. And that's where all my, uh, you know, all the years of being in art school really helps because I learned all these watercolor techniques. And dry brush is when you get rid of the excess water and then you just have, you know, just the paint and it doesn't bleed, right? And uh, and Bob says, yes, Mooka's Art Nouveau must have influenced Nagel. Definitely, right? You can see it. It's like a direct lineage, right, Bob? And uh, Vargas with the pinups. Yeah, definitely. And Nameless says, anyone follow? Uh, wow. Wow. I would like to buy a vowel, please. Wow, that's some name. And he's a huge fan of how he can paint surreal dreams. I'm going to look that up, definitely, and see if I could check out his work. And thank you for sharing that. So it's 12.04. We had, what a great, oh, it's Polish. Yes, Polish people are wonderful. Love my Polish friends. So we had a great conversation. The live stream just flew by. And so this is it for, uh, I'm going to work on her, uh, work on uh, the lovely, talented uh, Miss McDonald off screen to kind of finish her up. But thank you for joining me and kind of working on some of the anatomical forms that make up this beautiful woman. And so I was very excited about that and uh, to share it. And thank you for being a part of it. Thanks so much for... Uh, indulging me in my lateness today and don't forget you know uh, you know I'm gonna be uh, you know email me at paintingglyphs at gmail.com I'll put you on the mailing list so we can put updates on the portrait of Laura Dern contest it could be any portrait just make sure that it's a nice high-resolution post uh, picture 
It'll increase your chances of winning. So that's exciting. So get working with that. I want you to win, you know. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people. So your chance of getting a free Extreme Patriot Arrow is really good. And take care, everybody. You guys are all amazing and girls out there. Wow. Thank you so much. You guys are great. I am pumped. I'm excited. And I hope to see you guys on Saturday. And take care. Oh, Patrick, if there's a contest. I'm going to send you information on that. And uh, so is a contest starting. And it's going to be really great. So it's going to be a portrait of Laura Thurn. And I'll reach out to you on that. So everybody, have a great night. Always a pleasure. And I will talk to you on Saturday at 8 o'clock for the Pastel live stream. Take care, everybody.